What's going on guys, Risa back with another video and in this video I want to cover how to be consistent in solos and this is a case study of 100 Thieves Arkham. Arkham is one of the most consistent players of any region in any game mode and his stats and history proves it. I'm going to split this video into two sections. First is how he plays in finals, so I'm going to be comparing week three of the FMCS solos, which is where he came first with some insane consistency, and I'm also going to look through the consistent things that he does between that tournament and then Dreamhack where he came third this month. This case study is going to go over multiple seasons, so the whole purpose of this is I can give you tips for any meta, so you can come back and watch this before any Dreamhack and all of the tips will hopefully still be relevant. And the second half of the video is going to be how he plays differently in opens in comparison to the finals of a tournament. This will be really useful for you guys who are playing cash cups and also in the opens of your own DreamHack tournaments every single month. Tons of the research and data from this came from 1UP Analytics who's worked together with me on this video again, so please go and show him support. His links are on screen right now, down below in the bio and also in the pinned comment. Go and show 1UP some love because he's done some phenomenal work. Sorry for the long intro, but a lot to be said. Let's get right into it. So here's the finals of the Qualifier 3 for the FNCS solos and also the game history for the DreamHack that's just happened in September. You can see out of these 12 final games with the best of the best in the regions, there's only one game where he didn't get any points, and that was in DreamHack where he came 74th. This match history is super impressive, so let's get into some of the reasons why he's so consistent. Firstly, he drops at a really powerful POI on the map. Last season, in the FNCS solos, he dropped at the Rig, which gives him that guaranteed launch pad. This season, he was dropping in Doom's Domain, which obviously has the Vault, which has a ton of loot and gives you a ton of shields from here as well, which is really, really good because of the chest spawn rate being 50 to 75%. In Qualifier 3 of the FNCS solos, he was uncontested in all six of his games, and these type of games are really where Arkham shines, where he doesn't have to fight in the early game or mid game and just gets set up really well for the end game. He's enabled himself to get a large amount of loot early on and then make a great dead side rotate, claim a good spot in the zone, make great mid game rotates and set himself up for end game as this is where he really performs the best. This season in Dreamhack he decided instead to contest Doom's Domain with Wavy Jacob. In four of the games he was only contested there by one player again which is Wavy Jacob and in two other of the games he was contested by three and four people respectively. Another consistent thing between the two games is the fact that once he had dropped he looted a couple chests but then put a huge amount of focus onto getting metal and brick immediately. It's much more difficult to get these materials on rotate once you've left, so he puts a hard, hard focus into grabbing these as he lands and just harvesting that metal straight away. Most of the time, the place that you drop is going to have the most metal because there's not that many cars on the roads anymore. They're much more difficult to harvest as you're rotating through that first and second zone. So really plan in your early game where you're going to get your metal from. And brick is a little bit less important because there's a lot of brick spots, but it's still really important to ensure you get this early on as well. And this is something Arkham has done in every tournament that I've watched so far. You can see on screen the averages of the builds that he's had remaining at each point of the zone for each of these tournaments. And notice how in the first zone he actually has less than in the second zone in both of these tournaments. This actually shows that yes, he's putting a large focus into getting these materials in the early game like the metal, like I said, but he's also planned out a path to get these later on. In FNCS Solux, for example, there's a large brick spot to the west of the map, and this is where he always rotated to to grab his brick from because it's a very fast harvesting. So in your games, just you need to make sure you have this planned where you're going to get all the mats from. His preferred loadout is also consistent through all of these. Now, no matter what the meta will be in the future, these double heals is something that's really, really important because at this point, just having minis, just having splashes, just having bigs just is not enough to get you healed up unless you take damage in the mid or late game. If you just take minis and you get hit for white damage, you're only going to be under 150 HP. And this is not a place you want to be at because it's going to make you need to go for an elimination in the end game. So in my opinion, even if you're just taking med kits, double heals is definitely required. And this is something that Arkham does in every single game. Double heals, AR, shotgun, and movement. His first and second zone rotates were something that was super planned out and very, very interesting to watch. In particular from the FNCS solos, because in this he was always using a dead side rotate and staying a little bit away from the edge of the first and second zones, and then going straight into the center of third zone, which we'll talk about later. The main key important factor here is the fact that he was always rotating early and gave himself a great position to stay away from the opponents because of this. This was the true reason to his success in the FNCS solos, and it was such a huge factor in every single game that he played. It was very, very clear when you watch it how he did these dead side rotates with the boat, coming in the edge of the zone and taking a zero damage and fighting no one as he did it. This season with the Dreamhack is a little bit different because he landed at Doom's Domain, and it's very difficult to get a dead side rotate from here. If he had to rotate to the east, you're going to have to go past the new Stark Island, which has a ton of players there, and it's very contested. 
He's a little bit too close to the center of the map to be going totally west and going around the edge of the map here. It's also difficult if he gets a southwest zone to go dead side. Plus, there's a ton of cars and extra mobility on the map, so a lot of the times he was actually just white lining in this tournament, which is completely different from what we saw last season. But what were the consistent things about this? Well, he was taking a smart rotation path that was clearly planned out in advance, and also he was rotating very early and gaining himself a high ground position as this kept him away from other players and gave him a really nice position to rotate from as well. Plus, this is the best way to get Storm Surge tags, which in these solo games was prevalent in nearly every single match. So no matter what the meta is, you always need to find a way to plan out your rotates ahead of time for the early game rotates, mid game rotates and late game rotates as well before the zones have actually happened. And this is something Arkham has clearly done. If you're at the edge of the map, go for a dead side rotate if it's possible. And if you're more closer to the center zone and a dead side rotate isn't possible, try to get a high ground position early that's near the center of first and second zone as it'll give you the shortest time to rotate and also the best position to get tags and keep away from opponents. So again here, he's not going for any eliminations in the early game, just consistently hitting these Storm Surge tags. And then once the third zone rotates, he always rotates early and tries to get as centered as possible here. I've talked about this a ton in my videos, but getting into the center of third zone makes your fourth zone rotate as easy as possible. In particular, if there's a high ground spot around here that you can get onto and claim as your own. This is the main strategy that Arkham employs in his mid game, and he set up an average of 48.8 meters away from the center of zone in the FNCS solos week three. And this was a huge reason to his success. This made his rotation time an average of five seconds to get to the fourth zone when it appeared. So this is clearly something that was working really well. And in the DreamHack, his average rotation time was only 18 seconds in comparison to his fifth zone rotates, which were usually around 30 seconds for both tournaments. He only used 15 builds on average here as well, which shows that he's barely even building to protect himself while rotating, and all the builds he's using is just to make another box for himself in the fourth zone if he needs to rotate that way. So clearly, setting up in the center of third in the positions that he's doing so is really paying off for him. He really tries to save his mobility for this end game, in particular for fifth and sixth zone, the first and second movings. Trying to get into the fifth zone is the point where he is really not trying to use his mobility as much as possible, but in this season, season four, he's been using it a little bit more than he did previously. In the last season, in solo FNCS, he never used a launch pad to get into the fifth zone out of the six games, and he had one every single game, and he only used one crash pad as well out of all of these games, and that was when he had a max at distance zone. This season, he is using a little bit more mobility to get into the fifth zone if he has a max distance previous in the fourth zone. So at this point, he's really using one shockwave, maybe a crash pad, but this is because he has so many and he's not worried about the fact that he's not gonna have any for the first moving. First moving is where you really want to ensure that you're using your mobility here, because this is where there's a very wide zone and it goes a very, very far distance. So using your materials here, will usually use up to 700, 800, maybe even a thousand materials at this point. So it's really where you don't want to build. So whatever your game plan is, you really want to ensure that you have mobility at least for this section. Once he's used up all of his mobility, he does something very interesting that I don't actually see a lot of players do intentionally. And that is that he nearly always just full tarps rather than using a stair tarp. The reason that he does this is because it makes it a lot easier for him to get eliminations because he has much more angles to work from, in particular if he's working from a 2 by one just like mid-game fights. The majority of times what we would see in the end game is that players would use a stair tarp to get in as far as they can, and then at the end of that they do a full box, potentially when they're in zone, maybe do a 2 by one at this point, and then still continue to use that to get angles to get shots from, to pick up eliminations and get extra points this way. Like I said, most of the time Arkham is full tunneling and this does give him many more opportunities to get eliminations in endgame and he does this very effectively. When he stair tarps, he usually does this when he's on a lair completely by himself. So if he's in a completely uncongested lair at the edge of the zone, like on the dead side zone, he'll do a stair tarp just to get him in and then again box up at the end just like the other people that I've talked about earlier. However, when a flare is really congested, he's always going to be doing a full box, full tunneling all the way through, even like the old Bizzle Snake tunnel that we used to see. And this gives him so many opportunities to get eliminations in the end game, and he completely capitalizes on this as well. He's always very aware of players running next to his box, able to open up, cone them, and box them up completely. This allows him to get these really easy end game eliminations, gives him more materials to keep this running. Now, is this a strategy that I would recommend for you players? Well, if you're good at picking up end game eliminations, then definitely. However, if you're a player who really isn't that great at getting eliminations in the endgame, then it's probably not worth it. You're just going to use way too many materials. I would suggest instead just ensuring that you get away and try to get into a stair tarp as much as possible, to preserve your materials and increase your longevity in the endgame. However, if you're in scrims and this is something you want to try out to see if it really helps you and gets you much more eliminations in the endgame, definitely a strategy that I would definitely recommend trying. However, the main downfall to this strategy is that if you aren't able to pick up eliminations in the endgame, it's going to make you run out way faster and really decrease your longevity at all. 
So there was games in the solo FNCS where he would use a ton of his materials in the 7th and then kind of run out just before the 8th zone and then have to drop down into ultimate low ground to try and pick up some scavenger eliminations, which is really risky strategy and could really end up ruining the game for you. However, if you're utilizing this strategy effectively, using these boxes to actually get yourself eliminations, then this is a fantastic strategy to continually get forward into that endgame and Arkham proves this. So how does he play different when it comes to cash cups and then open tournaments as well in comparison to the finals? Because obviously the data we've gone through so far has just been from two different finals, which are very specific custom style format, which obviously not everyone is going to be playing. Because of Arkham's playstyle, which is very passive, playing for endgame every single game, it makes it very difficult to do well in an opens, because the majority of players who do well in an opens tournament have a large pop-off game at the start, where they get multiple digit kills, 10 to 20 eliminations, and then go in and play consistent placement after that. However, without this, it becomes very difficult to get a top placement in the opens and cash cups. Arkham has done great in solo cash cups and in solo opens before, but the trend here is that he always starts off the high elimination game. He actually struggled in the opens of the Dreamhack a little bit, where he wasn't on place to qualify for a large amount of it in Heat 1. He only ended up qualifying because he came second with 4 eliminations in the endgame, but a player of his calibre really should not be behind on the leaderboards, he should be dominating these kind of tournaments. And unfortunately that's just what happens when you land at a really contested POI in an open tournament with a large number of players, it's very easy to get eliminated off spawn. Then as soon as you've been eliminated a couple times off spawn it makes it really difficult to have consistent games and that's why that one pop off game is so good in an open tournament because it almost negates the fact that you need to be super consistent through some of the other games and it allows you a little bit more wiggle room. So the first biggest factor on how he plays different is the fact that his drop spot is way more contested off spawn. So he lands at Doom and obviously there's a ton of players that land at Doom's domain a lot of people to fight off spawn and it becomes very very difficult and again like I said this makes him a little bit less consistent in the early game. His general playstyle is still the same however at this time he is going to be taking fights in the early game. His fighting skill is really really good and just because I'm saying that he's not as good as a W care that does not mean that he's not good at fighting. He's extremely patient and what I would say is he's extremely good at fighting high level players which is something that a lot of people don't do. He does this by continually spacing himself from the opponents, keeping one tile between, always having a layer to reset or build in front of him so that he can't take damage back in return. And he's always taking right hand peaks which is very very impressive to do, his movement is really really good. Where he struggles with is that since a lot of the players are much lower level, the fights drag on a lot longer. When it comes to pro players killing much less skilled players, in all honesty a lot of them just psycho really really hard and push extremely aggressively. And this is something that Arkham doesn't do that much when it comes to open tournaments. A lot of players crash pan into boxes, make what I would consider to be not good plays against high level players, but in all honesty when you're playing open players and you're a pro you're probably infinitely better than some of these low level players and making some more of these psycho plays is how a ton of these players get high eliminations in the early games of their tournaments. So how does this apply to you, your dream hack and your cash cup experience? Well if you're a fantastic fighter, even just a really really good fighter, best than the majority of average players in the open lobbies, you can definitely WK your first game and get that big lead and go for those high elimination points, go for those high placement points in that first game and that's going to put you way ahead and give you much better chance at qualifying for something like the DreamHack semi-finals or even just getting money in a cash cup. Then after that you can play much more consistently because you're going to be in the higher elo lobbies with much better players and then from then on you can play for end game and you can be much more consistent in those points. I see a lot of very medium level players who struggle with getting into the semi-finals who really should be there because they have the skills to do it but they're just not structuring their dream hack opens well enough or their cash cups as well. Having this big pop off game to start with will really really help you out and it's something you should really be practicing by playing a ton of solo arena and really getting a solid strategy down on how you're going to play that first game out well. Remember though, if you are not a good fighter this is not for you. Play more consistent, play for end game. There is no point in W keying if you can't fight. Hope you guys enjoyed this video and learned a lot, a ton of time went into this, please 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 go and follow one up on Twitter, on YouTube, he's doing the Boobermacast podcast which is fantastic, I have been on twice, go and listen to that, all links are down below in the description and in the pinned comment like I said, thank you very much for watching, hope you guys enjoy, see ya!